Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 1, Things Keep on Changing. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Now that we're back at school for a couple, for a couple of weeks, for our Year 11 and 12 students at least, I thought it would be good for us to put together a video or so every cycle to talk about some of the issues that you guys are facing as Year 11 and 12 students in this very strange and very different year. You guys would be familiar with our guest, Joe Parker. Joe's a, a life coach from HeartSparks. She's a counsellor and a speaker as well and has worked with us for the last couple of years with regards to our wellbeing programs. Joe, thanks for agreeing to be part of this and we hope that our students get something out of the conversations that we have. The first conversation we're gonna to have today is about adapting to and dealing with change. And we know that change is an aspect of all our lives every day, but it sort of feels, particularly for our senior students, that this year, the change is so significant and so different to what they've experienced before that it's a real challenge. Tell us a little bit about the concept of change and the impact that it has on people from your perspective. Mm, Thanks for having me, Andrew. And I'm so glad that we can open up these conversations because you're right, the impact is huge this time around, particularly for senior students everywhere. I think in life, we know that change is around us. It's something that we experience daily in a lot of different forms. But what we're seeing this time around is that the change is impacting every element of life all at once. It's change as well that we're not having much say over necessarily. We feel a lot of the time like things are being dictated to us or the way that we need to respond is being dictated to us when in a lot of changes historically, we might still get to have a say as to how we show up. And also, we're not talking about one change here. We're talking about a huge period of change where it can feel like the goalposts are moving again and again and again. And so once we start to become familiar with one rendition of what change looks like, suddenly the rules change all over again and we're constantly in that state of flux. And what I'm seeing everywhere, not just with students, but with people everywhere, is that the impact is becoming really significant in a lot of different ways. I'm finding that people are really struggling to remain grounded and present in what's happening in their lives. People are finding that their anxiety is rising in a lot of different ways, particularly if they're living with anxiety or mental health conditions already. And just generally day to day, it can be hard to know where to focus or what the priorities are because the messages that we're receiving from a lot of different places are that the priorities are shifting consistently. And so especially for students, when we're also trying to make big decisions about what it is that we want to do at school, after school, who it is that we are as people and what's important to us, this overarching conversation of change can also just make everything feel a bit rocky at a time when ultimately we're trying to be more focused and dedicated and present across the board. And Joe, we we at the start of the year focus a lot on providing students with an insight in terms of how they're going to be successful in year 11 or year 12 or particularly year 12, I suppose. And we talk about the importance of routine. Mm. And it seems to me that one of the things that has been a struggle for me in particular is you get yourself used to one type of routine or one routine, and then you're asked to change and okay, you're going to change and you try to make the best of a new routine. And just when you get used to that, you've been asked to get used to another routine. And it seems to me that the change within the change, the fact that you have to change to a whole lot of different circumstances is challenging, is trying to develop a routine and being willing to adapt that routine to the different circumstances. Is that something that's really key for students and everybody in this period? 
Mm, absolutely. And our idea of what routine can look like is changing in this period as well. The way, the way that I think of it is there was a time, and it was before we went into this last lockdown that we're experiencing right now, where I was in the car with my husband and we were driving back from Macca's and I, I had a frozen Coke in one of those cup trays in the car. And every time the car would hit a bump in the road, I'd find my grip of the cup tray strengthening and trying to almost hold it still. And what was ultimately happening was that the harder I gripped on, the more coke I was getting on my lap. As soon as I started to relax my grip a little and let my arms move with the bumps, I found that everything was okay. And that's a bit what it's like right now. I think that the more we can allow our routine to flex and change and adapt as we're being told that it needs to, but at the same time, find these if not full routines, little moments that we can continue to anchor into consistently throughout the day, whether it is something as simple as the time of the day that we eat lunch, the time of the day that we go for a walk, uh, what it is that we're wearing and knowing that in advance, just finding those almost stepping stones of routine in what is completely adapting and changing can be enough to at least begin to ground us back into the idea of routine, even if we can't access routine as we want to and have been able to in the past. And I, I, think, to us, I think to myself that for you and me in the jobs that we're doing, we'll still be doing something similar next year. So... The fact that we can hold on to a job or something that we know is going to be there past the period that we're experiencing, yet for our Year 12 students at the moment, they're trying to reach a combination, an event that finishes their time at school or for Year 11, 12, Year 11 students going into Year 12. So they're having to they're having to adapt to this change in a period of their lives where they're looking to, to finish one part and move on to another part. And that must be challenging them, challenging them for many reasons in terms of just getting their head around what it's going to look like after they finish this year. Absolutely. And it's a, what we're asking and what is being asked of Year 12 students in particular is like nothing that Year 12 students have experienced before in this way. So often in life when we're in a period of uncertainty or there's an unknown, we think back to other times when something similar has occurred and almost ground into our understanding of what that time looked like. But this time around and right now, we don't have that marker point of comparison. And so most definitely it's challenging. And every second that a year 12 student's able to show up and be present, not just in their learning or their studies, but in what's happening around them is a huge win. And so often right now it's about thinking of, well, what, what do I know? What is in my control and what isn't? And how can I try and focus my attention in on what's happening next rather than what's going to happen months and months in advance, which at a time when we're asking people to future plan is nearly impossible. It's a huge feat. And we've talked about dealing with change, Joe. If we're going to deal with change, how important is it for our students to actually put up their hand every so often and admit that they're not actually dealing that well with what's going on and they're prepared to accept that I don't feel right or I need a little bit of support or I need a little bit of advice. How, how important is that sense of admission that I'm struggling with, with what I'm having to deal with as important as trying to find mechanisms to cope with that change. Yeah, it's crucial. And I think it's also twofold. First of all, before we even put our hands up and say, hey, I need some help here, it's important that first of all, we acknowledge within ourselves that we're not doing so well because that in itself can be really challenging just to sit and to know that we're in need of support at any point in time. And I've said this to a lot of senior school students that I'm working with in our one-on-one -on -one sessions at the moment, that I'm actually more worried about you if you're not having periods of struggle from time to time, because those instances where we feel like we do need external support or more support than what we've got are actually, for lack of a better word, really normal right now. Yep. And so while sometimes we can be worried that we're, falling behind or running into difficulty because we feel like we need support. It's actually the opposite right now. And it's a sign that we're being really present in the situation. And so those moments that you mentioned are crucial because until 
until students are using their voice and putting their hand up and, and saying, hey, I need some extra help here. It can be hard for their teachers and support staff and other people around them who really want to help to even know. Because as students, and particularly as senior school students, it's so easy to get into those routines of just kind of soldiering on or chugging on as such without letting other people see how it is that they're feeling or naturally feeling inside. Joe, we wanted to finish off each of these little conversations that we have with you providing two or three or four or how many you think is appropriate little strategies or steps that our students can put into place with regards to dealing with the topic that we're talking about. So to finish off our first podcast, what are some practical strategies that you'd like to give our students in terms of coping with change? Because the one thing that I know is that this isn't the final adaption to change that they're going to have to experience this year it's going to change again and just the circumstances of exams and all that will change throughout the year so what are what are your practical steps that you, or advice that you'd give to our students about dealing with change and hopefully thriving just not surviving yeah thriving is the, is the key word here and the first one is just to check in with yourself and recognize those moments where you feel like you're not doing okay and know that putting your hand up and asking for some additional support from people you trust is actually a sign of strength not of weakness the second is to look for little moments in every day where you can create some kind of routine and some kind of consistency so that even though there might be big chunks of time where you don't know what's happening and you're unable to control that, there are still these almost little stepping stone moments throughout the day where you can anchor into some kind of routine. Things like sleep and exercise and food and getting enough water sound pretty basic, but they're really important in times of change to support our body and our brain to be able to function in a way that's going to be adaptable. And connection is more important now than ever. It can be hard to feel connected the way we used to when we're walking around with things like face masks on and we're not able to spend quality time together in the same way as we used to be able to, but to look for ways to connect and have a laugh with mates, even if it is online and like this through conversation is so important in remaining active and present in the relationships that we have as well, which is automatically going to support us to feel a little better. And finally, just to know that there's going to be things right now that are outside of your control and that's okay. It's, it's not a great situation, but there's also an opportunity for a lot of hope and resilience building right now that no one else in the world has the ability to access the way that you do. And so knowing that you don't have to control it all because you can't and giving yourself permission just to show up for what you can is super important right now. Well, thanks for that, Joe. And a um, couple of things for our students. We'll, we'll be doing this every two weeks or so, every cycle or so, and we'd like to ensure that we're covering topics that you're interested in. This will go out through different formats, through the Year 12 Facebook page. And if you've got any feedback that you'd like to give us in terms of topics that you'd like to cover, we're looking to make these podcasts not just having a bit of light and shade. So we'll be talking about some positively focused topics as well as well as just admitting that these times are challenging and there are topics that we need to cover to, to feel like we're supporting you and indeed supporting each other through this time. So thanks, Joe, for um, participating in this and uh, we hope that we'll be able to explore some of the topics that our students are interested in in coming podcasts and we really do thank you for being involved. Mm, thanks for having me and um, again, I'm so glad that we can open up these conversations. Hopefully they're of value. Thanks, Joe. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.